Deceiver's Life by Mantri Pragada Markandiyulo, Hyderabad, India. Read by Eden Soriano Trinidad from Philippines. Deceiver's Life Everywhere some problem or the other exists. There are people who deceive colleagues and employees. We come across below type of activities in each and every office, factory, and government offices. Because of such incidents, many people or employees suffer financially being deceived by deceivers. However, people are intelligent to recover their investments, losses, and doubtful credits and deposits. People sometimes do realize about their past misdeeds and wrongs and mistakes, but the time cannot roll back. Time will not stop. Day by day, people get older and older. One should know the objective of life, goal, responsibility, and more than all, a concrete plan of action to settle down in his or her life. Such disciplined people would be able to guide the youth and the younger generation people to the writer perspective angle. Of course, some people commit mistakes and mistakes do happen and people commit such mistakes could be rectified. People move in the public life and people live in the society for all purposes of this education, career, business sake. Different types of people come across to each and everybody with various ideologies and with varied frame of mindset. These days are such that many people get influence on various good and bad issues and during the process of business transactions, some people land in problems due to mishandling the topics. The reasons could be many. Who will monitor such people? Who will give proper advice to such people? Who will come to rescue and who will guide such people? One cannot answer these questions. In this aspect, one will be able to understand how a person got entangled in problems could be known if one goes through the below matter. On one day or the other, any deceiver is sure to land in trouble. Inviting trouble is sure for a deceiver. There are people who initially invest his or her share in the business, no matter. But at some day, without the knowledge of the investor, somewhere, some pilferage of money will take place during the running of the business due to luxurious leading life for the sake of show put up or due to unforeseen expenditure. The business in this world is of very different types such as small business, petty business to big business, some small scale industry to medium scale industry, trading business, share market business, finance business, automobile business, cosmetic consumer items business, garment business, construction business, gold and silver business, electronic business, contracts business, so on and so forth. The investment of a person depends on the size of the business. In India, many people do business of their interest in various regions and at various places. Even employees of state, central and public sector organizations do side business while working. Let us now know about some incidents that landed people in trouble and take a look how a deceiver's life would be. For example, some case studies are projected below. 
One employee of a factory who was working as a tradesman started Chit's business and money lending business and used to conduct various denomination cheats each month. He also used to lend money to his co-employee for interest. His name was Mr. Rao. Of course, he might have invested his own amount to commence this business. In a span of over 10 years, he conducted many cheats and earned money. He even purchased a small-scale industry and was doing subcontracting jobs. He used to maintain utmost confidentiality and was doing money matter with his colleagues and employees. He used not to tell anybody regarding money matters. Mr. Rao used to request people to reinvest the principal cheat amounts from the cheat holders for which Mr. Rao used to pay interest. Mr. Rao also used to take his colleagues' professional fee and other loans for running the business uninterrupted. However, Mr. Rao used to pay interest regularly to such employees. Some years pass on like this. Mr. Rao has gained the confidence of all the colleagues. Mr. Rao was able to manage any shortfall of money by arranging money drawn from his PF loans, consumer loans, credit loans, bank loans, and others to save his face value. Mr. Rao was a short man, around five feet tall, height, and little bit fat. He used to wear total white dress always. He also used to wear white shoes and complete black cooling glasses. Many employees kept their PF and other amounts, thinking that high rate of interest used to get monthly in return for their principal amounts. Of course, he used to make cheat amounts interest amounts to all his customers. On one fine day, when he knew that he could not raise any money for making payments to customers, including cheat amounts, Mr. Rao felt nervous and was not able to make any payments timely to his cheat holders and others. Mr. Rao even was frequently absconding to office and was irregular in attendance. He used to come to office, work for one or two hours, and used to push off from office. Of course, no mobile phone was allowed into the factory premises. He even discarded his homeland landline phone. He was very much helpless in making any payment to anybody. Mr. Rao used to get zero salary as he has many salary deductions in view of his taking all types of loans. He was on loss of pay. On one fine day in office, he took some sleeping pills, limited quantum only. Looks to be acting and show put up drama with a note written that he would like to die. Noticing health the condition, Mr. Rao's colleagues taken him to hospital. He was treated for three to four days and was discharged from hospital. Now, the problem started. All the cheat holders, deposit holders, and others who have to receive money from him were restless. All these people had a meeting one day and how to get the amounts back. Then, these cheat holders and deposit holders had come to conclusion. The small-scale industry which he purchased was to be sold. The proceeds derived of the sale of Mr. Rao's industry is to be distributed as per priority basis. These people also have to come to conclusion that Mr. Rao be allowed to work for some more years regularly. His monthly salary and others is distributed equally to all. 
Mr. Rao to be applied for voluntary retirement under VRS scheme and the proceeds be distributed amongst all the recipients of money. No complaint was lodged against Mr. Rao with the police or with the management. However, Mr. Rao's family and children got disturbed due to Mr. Rao's financial mismanagement. Mr. Rao became depopular, lost his face value. No employee used to respect him. Some people banged him and abused him. Much has costed Mr. Rao. Totally, his family was on roads for a few years. He and his family never recovered financially so far. A couple of similar cases also took place in the same factory. Then, all the employees realized neither to organize any cheats in the factory premises nor to keep deposits with any employee for the sake of higher interest. All the employees learned a lesson from this and stopped cheat business activities. Factory management should not allow such cheat fund activities to run within the factory or office premises in the best interest of their employees. Some stringent actions to be taken against those conducting cheat fund business money lending business during the office or factory hours. Every respect, the government organizations should issue orders that no person should conduct any cheat business, money lending business, or any business nor cheat fund schemes or any closed business and others within the office or factory premises. This will facilitate employees to work effectively and peacefully.